This video is going to show you how to get started working with margins in CSS. So I've got my standard HTML structure here, doc type HTML, uh, open and close head oh, with the title, and I'm just going to put example web page, um, and then I've got my closing head open body, and this is where all of the content of my website is going to go, and then closing it with HTML. Um, so I'm using the brackets uh, text editor. If any of you are interested in using brackets, it's a great free tool to use available from brackets.io on the web. Okay, I'm going to save this and I am going to put this in a folder I've created on my desktop and I'm going to call it my how to example. So I'm going to call this howto.html. Now keep in mind I always recommend that you keep your file names all lowercase letters. Don't put any spaces in them. If you want to use something that kind of appears to be a space, you can use the underscore. Okay, so, and you want to save it as type all files. This will ensure that you are saving this correctly as an HTML file. Now you'll notice that what's happened to my brackets page is I have some color in my tags, and down at the bottom, I have, it's now showing HTML as the language that I'm working with. Okay, so let's say I want to have some basics here, such as um, how to make a peanut butter sandwich. My child would really appreciate this. And let's say I have a paragraph with some sample text, and there is a really great um, tool that you can use to find some sample text by going out to Google and doing a search for lorem ipsum, ipsum generator. There's a bunch of different funny ones out here. There's like hipster, ipsum, bacon ipsum. So if I want, let's say I want to do bacon ipsum, I seem to like this one. It'll say how many paragraphs do you want? I'm just going to put two for this example and let's go ahead and make it spicy and basically what this does is it's going to give you some some words in a paragraph that you can then use as some sample text here and I'm just going to put this in here and just call this like section 2 or maybe like step 1 get, get your ingredients Okay, and then I'm going to just grab this other paragraph here. And now, obviously, if you're going to be creating a website, it's best to have real content, especially if that, if your website is something other than um, just creating this to kind of figure out how things works. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Now, in brackets, there's a cool feature with the lightning bolt for a live preview over here. This requires you to have Google Chrome installed. And I'm going to click that. And here is my page so far. Okay, pretty boring. There's nothing here, no colors or anything. Um, but here is my H1 tag. Here's my paragraph. Here's my H2 tag. Here's a paragraph. Um, obviously for something like this you'd want to have images and things like that but I just wanted to show you today on how to use some margin so you'll see what happens is by default no matter how big you stretch the screen the text content is going to go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and if you had something that was you know had just like smaller um, smaller bits of content everything aligns by default to the left of the page so you might end up with a website that literally only half of the screen has content on it and everything's to the left and that isn't fun for any of us right so the first thing we want to do is we want to put some margin in here so similar to how you would do Microsoft Word you you know Microsoft Word has some like one inch margin set all the way around so you have to think in terms of pixels um, and M's for a web development margins. But let's say I just wanted to start with some kind of pixels because that's pretty easy uh, for us to understand. So this window now most most websites monitors 
Um, if you have like one of those large screen monitors, you might be looking at like 1920 pixels in width. Um, generally, people like to like to stick to like a 1200 pixel width. So if you think about this page right here, maybe I'm looking at 1200 pixels from from left to right. So if I wanted to put a margin in here and I want it to kind of just take up a certain amount of space, I can say something like, hey, maybe I want to make that margin be 100 pixels and that might bring us to here. A better way of thinking about it though is, in, is with percentages. So if this whole screen is 100%, no matter how, you know, how big my screen is, maybe I want to say that 10% of my, um, 10% is going to be my margin, so maybe that would be something that looks like this. And maybe I want that margin to be on both sides and top and bottom. So first thing to do is I'm going to just uh, create my style sheet in the head section. So this is considered a, this is considered an embedded or um, internal style sheet. And now the first thing that I want to do for setting a margin is I need to create a rule. And this rule is going to apply to the entire web browser. So the the HTML tag that you want to apply this to, the, again, the one of the easiest ways to do this is to apply it to the body tag. So you'll notice here on line 10, the body tag is what holds all of this content. So if I put, if I see the body tag as this this box that everything is sitting in and I say I want to apply a margin to it this will make everything sit inside of a margin so that's what I'm going to do to create my rule I need to first give it a selector and when you're first learning um, when you're first learning CSS the easiest way to do this is by using an HTML element tag okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put margin and then I'm going to put 10%. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to apply a 10% margin to the body tag. So let's see what happens when I click save. And now you'll see that my page already looks so much different because I have this 10% margin applied. Now, the bottom, you can't really tell, but there is a margin here. Uh, and you'll see that, that um, the scroll bar comes up when I get too small. So right there, there's the scroll bar. If I went like this, you now you can kind of see that margin right there. Um, another thing that you might want to do is maybe you want to have a, a margin that's different sizes and doesn't have, you know, doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily want it to be the same way. So the way you can do that, there's there's a couple ways you can do this. If you just use margin, this is going to apply to everything. You can do something like margin top and only have that apply to the top. So if I just want to separate these all, I can say margin left, 10%, uh, margin right, 10%, margin top, 5%, and margin bottom 5%. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Alright, so you'll see here, now I still, I have 10% still on the right and left, and then I have a smaller margin on the top and bottom. Okay, so again, you can type all this out, or as coders, we always like to come up with shorthand. So there is a shorthand way of doing this, and that is by using the margin and thinking about a clock. So 12 o'clock is at the top, right? 6 o'clock is at the bottom. So if you start at 12 o'clock, this, this is the first position at the top. Then, then 3 o'clock would be the second position, so your right side. The bottom would be the third position and left would be the fourth position. So I can change all this and say I want the top to be 5% and the right to be 10%, the bottom, and so on. So here are my four positions. Top, again, think of the clock, right, bottom, and left. And I can get rid of these. So now I've saved myself some, some code. And you will notice that nothing has changed. 
Now, I can even make this shorter because you see this pattern here, 5 and 10, right? So because I want this to be 5 and 10, I can just remove this. And this is basically even further shorthand that says top and bottom is 5%, right and left is 10%. So now I've saved myself even more code. And there we go, nothing has changed yet. So that is a way that you can apply a margin to a particular this is kind of the basic uh, margin for a web a web browser. You can always supply margins to any other uh, selector as well. So if I want to have like a further margin for my um, my H1s, I can do the same thing. I can say H1, and then let me just do margin top an extra five percent, and you'll see. Do you even? Oh, not margin top. It's not really going to show me anything. So let me do margin left. Okay, so now you'll see that this margin, it, it, the body margin is right here, but now I've taken the H1 and put, put in a further margin on it as well. Um, there's also padding, and padding is basically, let me show you. Let me put a margin left on my H1 and then I'm going to put a border one pixel black solid so you can see where my H1 box is so here is my H1 box here is that margin I'm going to take that margin off so you can see it in its normal view here okay so here is that now if I want to put something so margin you know will push the box okay um, it kind of gets applied to the outside of the border. Okay, and the border is kind of considered the, you know, where the the box is kind of sitting at a given moment. So if I don't want to, if I want to have a box up here, but I don't want the box to be so crammed in with my with my content, I can use padding. So I can say padding of five percent, and watch what happens. So here we go. So I've got padding of 5% all the way around and you see what has happened now. Now there's some space between my content and the box. Now I'm not saying you have to use borders for things. Um, some people like borders. They, I mean they can, uh, they can kind of pull out a, part, a particular piece of content but some people can get kind of crazy with borders and colors and stuff like that. So you don't necessarily have to have to do that. Um, if you want, you can do lots of things to any of these tags, right? So any, like the H1 or the paragraph, I mean, I always tell people think about everything as a box. And then it helps make CSS a little easier. I can change the color of the font. If I want to change that font. So um, you can't really see that color real good. Let me just change it to red. Red is not a good color, but but it's something you can actually see. And then if I want to change the background color of the H1, I can use the background color. So um, let's see, let's see. I just want to say silver. And so here is again. This doesn't look too great, um, but. I'm just showing you some examples on some CSS properties that you might want to use. So this will show you again how to make a border uh, around an element, how to change the color of a font, how to change the color of a background, and how to use padding, and how to use margins to either an element or the entire browser itself. Okay, great. Stick around for my next video.